Today we are here at a farm. Believe it or not, there is livestock in there, although it's worms. Today we are at Vermico Farms in North Edmond. And joining us is Mike Adell, who is the farmer, right? That's right, Farmer Adell. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Mike, thank you so much for letting us come and so see well. your process here. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about how you got started. Why, why worms? <laughs> sure, sure. So, you know, I was in a personal place of needing something to do, mm -hmm. kind of between careers and asking myself, is it, is it time to kind of chase that dream yeah. of starting your own business and whatnot? And after a little bit of research and looking into some things, talking to some people, um, we thought, you know what? We keep hearing about castings and worm castings. I personally didn't know a lot <laughs> about them, but I kept hearing it. Yeah. And the fact that uh, these, these same people were lamenting the fact that they weren't available right. nearby. Right. There they had to not go, a lot of They them. had to go out of state yeah. uh, to, to get them. And so, you know, for a new business, you know, that sounded like an opportunity. Yeah. So and tell us a little bit about the actual process of getting the, the um, sure. worm the castings. castings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it starts off with food. Okay. Right? And so... This is the best looking food I've Isn't seen. that good yeah. looking dirt? It almost looks, you know, like castings themselves. Uh -huh. But it, it's, this is black peat. Okay. And uh, it's very, very uh, rich in organic matter. This gets brought in in bulk. Uh, we pulverize it. While we mix it with a little bit of grain, you can see a little bit of grain mixed mm -hmm. in here. And then it's ready to feed to the worms. So uh, every two weeks, believe it or not, all these pails, all these buckets in this room have to be t um, emptied and filled back up again with new food every two weeks. So we harvest worms every two weeks. Okay, so this, this barn has a turnover a every turnover. two weeks. A turnover, that's right, every two weeks. So how many worms are in each bucket? About 250. Wow per bucket and, and it takes about 10 or 11 days for the worms to go through their two and a half gallons or so of okay. food. And then we leave them in the buckets for an extra three or four days for them to begin kind of getting nervous <laughs> and moving around and rubbing up against other worms. And that's when the cocoon creation, you know, egg, if you will, egg creation process happens Okay. when they do their breeding. Okay. Because we want baby, baby worms you too. You want baby worms so that you can increase your, your right. production here. So yeah. tell us a little bit, once two weeks have gone past on these buckets, what's that process then? Sure. So then uh, every, you know, every day during those two weeks, we'll take out that day's portion of buckets and we'll wheel it out into the production area. We're in the temperature climate controlled area right now. Um, and I imagine the humidity is good for them? Yeah, this is good. I mean, yeah. humidity isn't quite as critical. Okay. Uh, temperature, these are European night crawlers okay. and uh, they're fairly temperate, if you will. Um, so we try to, you know, our thermostat set on 73, mm -hmm. which is right in the middle of, of kind of where they like it. Anyway, it keeps it in the mid 70s, okay. which is right where they like it. Okay. So uh, we take them out of the temperature controlled room then, we'll take a stack of these at a time out into the production area where we go through the harvesting process. And harvesting is where we uh, will dump out the worms okay. onto the harvester. Mm -hmm. So the top layer is where we catch rocks and big things and uh -huh. the worms, uh -huh. right? And we catch those. So that's a quarter inch screen and we regroup those worms and re-catch them, put them in a new bucket with filled with, food? with new food. Okay. And when we, we've gone through that whole stack, we bring those back in here and they're ready to eat for the next 10 or 11 days. The middle layer, there's an eighth inch screen in the middle that uh, is where the hatch and hatch material okay. is cut. That's where the babies are okay. in that hatch material. So on days, and we always catch the hatch, but we don't always keep the hatch, right? So on days that we keep the hatch and we're ready to grow some more babies, and we do that five or six days a month, mm -hmm. because otherwise we'd be overrun with, <laughs> with kids. So uh, at any rate, we'll keep that hatch material, about 10% of which are really the cocoons, uh -huh. right? And then uh, moisten those down, split those up into buckets, you know, about half a full and moisten it down real good. The babies need lots of moisture. Okay. They, they, they can't make their own moisture just yet. Okay. And we'll top that off with a couple inches of this food and then set it apart, you know, aside for about a week. And then we'll check on them and as soon as it looks like they're, they've eaten through that food, we'll put another two or three inches on top. And 
Let them sit for another week or so. Okay. So and you're slowly rearing them. Slowly rearing, rearing them and feeding them. Keep it, but you've got to keep an eye on them because we've, we've had times when we've lost track of them, didn't feed them in time, okay. didn't keep them moist enough, and, okay. and we lose them. So they're a little more delicate. Than Very the delicate. Okay. The, older, the older worms are pretty hardy. <laughs> you know, they, I can feed them early, I can feed them late, you know, they're, they're okay. The babies, you've got to pretty much stay on schedule. Right, right. So then, after all that filtering, Eden's Best comes out, right? And yes. that is so, the casting. Absolutely. That eighth, the castings all fall through that eighth inch screen down into the conveyor that, where we catch it into the big super sacks, mm -hmm. right? Right now, mo the, most of how we handle uh, the castings is in those super sacks. Okay. And so, yeah, we'll bundle those up and uh, either set those aside for some of our commercial customers or we'll pull one off the line and then use that to fill up our four pound bags and our 30 pound bags. Okay. We have smaller bags that are a little more retail friendly right. so and do-it-yourself friendly. So around Oklahoma City you have some retailers that are selling your 30 pound bags but yes. tell us a little bit about where we could find the smaller bags, because you can mail those, right? <laughs> yeah, the four-pound bags are available, like on Amazon. Okay. Uh, but those are also at the same retailers, but, uh, but nationally available on Amazon. Right, okay. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit, too, if you don't mind, about just worm castings. Sure. What is it? Why should we add these? And I know sometimes there's ratios. Tell us a little bit about what your recommendations are for the worm castings. Yeah, so... Um, two different things there. Mm -hmm. One is why worm, why worm <laughs> castings, right? Why would... Um, why do people, are they going crazy yeah. over these things? Because yeah. we can't keep them. I mean, they, whatever we make in a month goes out in right. a month. And it's been crazy. It's been crazy fun. Uh, I think there's, I don't know, a handful uh -huh. of reasons why castings are so darn good. One of them is, I think the, the, the main one is the, uh, the nutrients. Mm -hmm. uh, the, there's part of what... Uh, the worm process is in the digestive process and getting um, this, this, which is 40% organic matter. Okay. The worm uses up maybe 10 or 15% of that for themselves. That other 85% goes into castings. Mm -hmm. So a high organic matter content um, is what generates microorganism activity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And microorganisms, that's what is the difference between, as they say, between dirt and soil, right? right? Yeah. Is, is the more soily we can make the dirt, the more organisms that are alive and going well in there, then, um, then you're getting all kinds of good benefits like um, soil, uh, water retention, mm -hmm. soil oh, aggregation, yeah, aggregation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That'll hold more, more water and less runoff. Um, nitrates, wow, the, mm -hmm. the worms in their digestive process high nitrate content in the castings. And the thing about the castings is, uh, unlike other types of soil amendments, it's real slow release, yeah. right? Where a potting soil, a potting mix, might give you that good nutrient supply for about a week. Right. Uh, these castings will just, almost two, almost two months, just keep, keep giving and giving. So slow as far release. as ratio, we kind of are going to top dress or mix it in a little oh, bit? It depends on this. Okay. If you already have a mature and or pre-potted plant, mm -hmm. something that's been going on, then side dressing. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it's new, um, absolutely. People put a little bit of castings underneath the, the, the plant okay. before, and uh, some along the sides. There's a ratio of like one part castings to two or three parts native soil or potting soil or whatever you're using. And, and what I have to mention, because we don't have smell of vision, there's That's no right. smell to no. it. It has actually just kind of an earthy smell, but there's no stink no, to no, it or it, anything it's, it's like odor, that. No, no, it's odor-free, it's chemical-free, yeah. right? So Super. you could use it on house plants even, I would imagine. Absolutely. Indoors, outdoors, it's safe around pets yeah. and kids. There's nothing toxic about it. You can't use too much of it, I mean, from a standpoint of, of harming the flower right, or right, the plant. Right, right, um, Yeah, it's it's kind of dummy proof <laughs> it really is well we like that in gardening I so do. mike thank you so much for You're sharing so your farm with us yeah so glad you could make it we hope you enjoyed this video as part of our oklahoma gardening youtube channel you can also find even more videos on the ok gardening classics youtube channel and join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.